than 800 people with one mission, promoting a healthy environment. We are the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection. Earlier this month, the US EPA filed its final version of the Clean Power Rule. Under the plan, West Virginia utilities could be required to reduce their CO2 emissions by 37% from 2012 levels to just over 1,300 pounds by megawatt hour by 2030. That final number is considerably more stringent than the 1,620 pounds proposed under the earlier draft of the rule. Most of the electricity generated in West Virginia comes from coal-fired power plants. Following the announcement, Governor Earl Ray Tomlin issued a statement calling the plan unreasonable, unrealistic, and ultimately unattainable for our state, and said that while there have been calls for the state to refuse to submit a compliance plan, at this point, West Virginia still has not determined whether it will submit any plan to the EPA. The deadline to make that decision is September 2016. Governor Tomlin says the state continues to review the legal options. A copy of the governor's statement is available on his website. House Bill 2004, passed by the state legislature earlier this year, requires the DEP to develop a detailed report that includes a comprehensive analysis of the effect of the EPA rule on the state. That report is due 180 days from release of the final rule. We'll have more on this developing story in the coming months. The EPA has also proposed a new set of standards to reduce greenhouse gases and volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, emitted by the oil and gas industry by 40 to 45 percent from 2012 levels by 2025. The proposal calls for cutting methane and VOCs by eliminating leaks, capturing natural gas from the completion of hydraulically fractured oil wells, and limiting emissions from several types of equipment used at natural gas transmission stations. The EPA will take public comment for 60 days after the proposal is published in the Federal Register. More details are available on their website, epa.gov. Reducing your personal contribution to air pollution is a simple matter of changing a few habits. Here's the DEP's Brianna Hickman with some things that can help us all breathe a little easier. Consider your daily commute. If you drive alone, the easiest thing you can do to reduce your contribution to air pollution and traffic congestion in general is to join a carpool. Every person you add to the carpool means one less car on the road and one more parking space. Plus, it will also save you money. Driving just one less day per week can save you hundreds of dollars and reduce wear and tear on your car. Ask your employer about options for telecommuting or altering your work schedule to avoid heavy traffic. You can drive more efficiently during off-peak traffic times. Keep your car tuned up. Follow your vehicle's recommended maintenance schedule to keep it operating at peak efficiency and keep your tires properly inflated. Avoid unnecessary idling. The next time you're waiting in line at the drive through or for a long train to pass a railroad crossing, for example, shut your engine off. Finally, especially in the summer, fill up your car in the cooler evening hours to cut down on evaporation. Avoid spilling fuel and don't top off your tank. Gasoline vapors and other volatile organic compounds contribute to the formation of ground level ozone, which is a key component in smog. For Environment Matters, I'm Brianna Hickman. Coming up, going green. Marshall thundering her green, that is. We're back in a moment. 